So let's get started. Um, you know, Paul knows you a lot better yeah. than I do, Erica. So I'm going to just pass it over to Paul. Yeah. Yes, Paul yeah. and I, we go way back. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll let Erica give you sort of uh, highlights from, from her career. But I will say that uh, I, I remember some very cool uh, points in the beginning. First, that Erica was a top agent uh, in her own right. And then first was attracted to Keller Williams through Quantum Leap. So it was a, it was a desire uh, for, you know, learning a growth mindset. Uh, which he's taken forward for for so long. And Erica and I uh, have been in business for a long time, probably probably ten years. Uh, certainly, I've yeah, certainly I've known Erica to be one of the top Keller Williams people in leadership for a long time. And and something interesting is happening, uh, and that is during these times, which are very very challenging times you're seeing uh, Gary Keller reach out to people who are, uh, who are battle tested. And one, uh, you know, among many, many things, uh, Erica is very, uh, is very honest, uh, very direct, and is not afraid to, uh, to speak her mind, which is, uh, which, which is always very helpful in times like this. So Erica has been on the, uh, been asked to lead the national call uh, for operating principals and team leaders, and I thought, what a what a great uh, person because she is our, our one of our regional owners uh, to contribute at a local level. So to have her come in and talk to agents um, as agents face really unprecedented times, you know, can't think of someone better. So uh, if you give us a little of your uh, background in terms of uh, real estate experience, really unparalleled. Okay. Well, started on the East Coast, lived on the East Coast prior to moving to Idaho, and I was with that. It's okay to send me name names, right? I was previously a Remax agent, as a lot of us had been back in the day. Top producers tended to to be at Remax for many, many years. Um, moved out to Idaho. Yeah, sold a lot of property. Sold over 80 homes my first year in Idaho, over 100 per second. Came number one in the state. People thought I had two heads and a tail, and I didn't understand how do you move to a place where you don't know anybody and you know, more business than everybody around you. And it was really about systems and models. So when I met Gary Keller, I took a look at his business. Yes, it was quantum leap that threw me in for sure. I was invited um, by a, a group of agents to attend, blown away, and um, this made me curious about what does this guy's business look like, right? If this, this guy was head and shoulders above anyone I had learned from prior to, and I had learned from some great people. So I needed to take a look at his business model and thought, as an agent, he had literally taken what it took me 10 years to build on my own, create a blueprint for agents to follow, put in a package with a nice bow on it, right? And then I was able to literally teach other agents to do in one year what it had taken me 10 years to do. So I just hey, thought I need to be in business with this guy, right? Hey, Erica, sorry to interrupt you. Um, sure. I'm getting, uh, it is a little bit hard to hear you and I'm here, I'm, I'm getting the same message from the folks in the, in the chat. Is that better if I turn the volume up? Yeah, I think maybe just getting closer too, that helped. Okay, so um, what I was saying is that meeting Gary just kind of blew me away. I was, I was introduced to him. I uh, was invited to his quantum leap class, but getting to know him over two days while he did not talk about real estate at all, I just I was very clear on the impression, and that was this guy's a genius. I need to look at his business model and figure out, you know, what's going on there, who he is. But once I looked at it, I realized that he was he had created the blueprint for us all to follow. It, it would it would have taken me one year to do what it had actually taken me ten years to do had I only had Gary's blueprint first. So I thought, well, now that I know, I can't unknow, and I need to be in business with this man. And the only way to do that was to literally purchase the franchise and launch it in the state of Idaho because Keller Williams didn't exist um, in Idaho at that time. So my option to be in business with Gary Keller was that. And then I will say what happened after that was I intended, fully intended to continue being an agent. It was never my intention not to continue being an agent. 
But what happened was I found myself in a position of being able to, through the models and systems provided, uh, I was able to help others, other agents, um, you know, climb that ladder. So I became a full-time coach instead. Again, not my goal, it just sort of organically happened. And instead of listing and selling, I started teaching everybody else how to list and sell and how to build their business. Got it. Um, Eric, I have a question. I'm just going to get right into it. With the current market that we're in, in parts of Ventura County and Los Angeles County, which is where most of us here are, are in, uh, except for some in Santa Barbara, what we're noticing is that the inventory is super low for active listings because a lot of people ha have either withdrawn or are holding back from putting their homes on the market. But what we are seeing is that there are multiple offers and that the demand is way higher than what we anticipated. Uh, mm -hmm. So every listing that we, we've gotten over the last uh, few days that we've put on the market has had over four offers at every price point we've had, whether it was in the low threes. Uh, today we have one coming up for 1.3 million. We already had an offer before we put it up on the market. Um, are you noticing the same thing where you're at, or is it just more localized to where we're at? No, it's it's the same. We're, we're not. We're still seeing. It almost looks like business as usual. Of course, under the current environment, it's definitely not business as usual. We're doing it from yeah. our homes. We're doing it through technology. The market numbers are astonishingly high. I mean, they're, they're high here too. I know the luxury market's going to take the hit first. That's inevitable. It always does, right? And the bottom yep. of the market will pretty much remain the same. We have been in low inventory levels. I mean, all time record high low inventory levels for so long now that I don't remember when we weren't really. But that's about to change. So we're going to see that change. We all know that you can feel the ground shaking. You just haven't really seen the changes yet, but it's coming. Okay. And and one of the Tristan, one of the things too uh, that. You know, I think I mention it almost every time we get on with the agents uh, and owners, for that matter, um, is that this uh, this is unique in that the last time we had a major market disruption, it was centered around real estate, and this is not. Mm -hmm. And right. so there are a lot of facts and figures that we can muster. Oh, you know what? Actually, you put them up on the last webinar. It, you know, we could we could post them again, and we'll show you where to get the information from these webinars. Is that we we're really dealing with a very, uh, by many standards, very healthy real estate market prior to this. So to the extent that we can um, make some homes available, and, and I don't disagree with Erica, by the way, I think, you know, you're really sticking your head in the sand if you think that you're going to be business as usual, but also very curious that, um, that you are seeing multiple offers on properties that are priced well. Um, I talked to one manager who recently they had a they had a home in a in a more affordable uh, area and and it was priced well not not fire sale by any any stretch and they had 24 offers and this is last week Whoa. so yeah so you're you're you know to the extent that um, you can get people you know, where there was a high demand to put something out on the market at a, you know, at a price that's going to capture some eyeballs, you, you know, you really can still uh, do some great business. So then I have a question for Erica and then for you, Paul, if we're seeing what we're seeing now with the market at, at any point where the property is priced well, and obviously we don't know what's going to happen a month from now, right? Because this changes like in a day. Uh, what are some things that you're seeing work right now for agents that will help us prospect and still come from a point of still having a heart and not treating it like we're selling, but connecting with people so that we actually still have some transactions? Because I know there's agents out there across this, the United States that are still working. We're just, we're just adapting and changing along this whole path. Well, that's an easy answer. I've been talking to parents. We all have a lot of agents. And I've always said, and, and we've been, okay, as an industry, we've been pretty terrible at meaning, maintaining good, systematic, automated contact with our database. Right? The number one issue I have across the board in coaching agents of every level of production, which you would think it would be surprising, but I've I'm accustomed to it. I'm not accustomed to it. 
but I'm still fighting the uphill battle of agents having a database. Believe it or not, I still fight the battle of agents actually having a database that they're actually mining on a regular, systematized, automated basis. So I've always fought that uphill battle. Now I'm saying to agents, we know you've all, all we know you've always been sort of not so great as a whole at mm -hmm. maintaining contact. That's not everyone from the course are doing a great job. For the most part, we've been traditionally bad at it as an industry. Now, yeah. if you're not calling to check on your people, you're literally just being rude. So we should have always been in contact with them. Maybe we weren't the greatest at maintaining regular contact, but now you need to call your people. And if you're not calling your people now, you're literally just being rude. So you need to call uh -huh. this person. The script is easy. You need to just care. You don't need to be a salesperson. Being a salesperson would be a terrible idea. All you need to do is open the door to a conversation by saying, how are you? Are you okay? What can I do to help you? And the conversation will take on a life of its own, as it always does. If they want to reach out to you for real estate information. They will, and typically they do. If they have the inclination to put their hand up as a buyer or seller, they will. So it should be a very, very easy conversation. And really, it's just about us coming from a position of caring. Uh, and Erica, sorry, sorry to do this. Because um, again, we're, we're getting uh, uh, for sure, because your content is so good, and people are wanting to hear from you. We're getting a bunch of uh, messages that the sound is really tough, still. So sure do, I wonder, do you have earbuds that you can put in? Or even if you, even if you, uh, will you do Erica, AJ, do Erica a favor and, and put the, uh, put the uh, clickable zoom into her, into her text message box. And one thing Erica can do is just click on that. You can disconnect on your computer, connect on your phone and do it from your phone like I'm doing. Yeah. And while, uh, while she's doing that, I wanted to go over what she said for those of you who, who didn't hear it. She was a lot clearer towards the end, but she was practically yeah. saying, look, the key is your database. For those of you that have been working your database for a while now, it's important that you keep on doing it. And what she was saying, when you approach this, this, uh, this world that we're in with a heart, meaning mm -hmm. when you're reaching out to your past clients and sphere, it's going to sound like this. Hey, Paul, it's Tristan with, with Keller Williams Realty. I'm calling everyone that I can think of to see how they're doing. Is everything okay mm -hmm. with you and your family? Mm -hmm. Right? Nothing having to do with real estate, which is what she said. And she said, as you talk and engage, what happens is they bring it up if they have any questions. And that's what we've been noticing all across when I'm talking to everyone. They bring it up and they say, well, Paul, how? Um, thanks for calling me, man. I hope you're okay. But how's the real estate market. I mean, are people still buying and, and are they still mm -hmm. selling? That's the number one question that comes out. Mm -hmm. So you can do that through a call and you can also do that through text, similar way. Hey, Paul, yep. I thought of you today and I want to make sure you and your family are doing well. Everything okay with you? Question mark. And then you put Tristan with Keller Williams, right? So along the same lines, I do want to expand on, on one thing as um, as Erica is is uh, changing up her mic here, Paul. And if you want to interject, let me know, Paul. But sure. In regards to online leads, one thing that we've been doing because we are seeing that home searches are up dramatically, and in mm -hmm. some cases they're they're as low as up by thirteen percent, up to as high as seventy percent, which is pretty massive. Seventy percent more home searches, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but when we're getting people searching on our website, uh, we've, we've called so much over the last two weeks since it started that we've changed our, our approach to be like Erica is saying a lot more from the heart. And so Paul, the conversation mm -hmm. sounds a lot more like this. It's because we get a lot of Facebook lead ads through command mm -hmm. and Google lead ads through, through Y Lopo. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like, Hey, it's Tristan. Oh, he say, hey, Paul, is this, is this Paul? Or, you know, we, that's what we usually say. Like, mm, yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm like, yeah, this is Tristan with Keller Williams. You just visited our website through Facebook. And I know you're, you're not going to make a move anytime soon, probably. But I don't want to spam you either. Can you tell me what cities you're looking in so that at least I can send you homes you like? Mm -hmm. Right. And so you're approaching it a lot different. If they don't pick up, you can also text them just 
again, come from a point of, hey, look, I, I don't, I know you're not going to buy right now, Paul. Mm -hmm. It may take a while, but uh, here's what I can do for you. So the text would sound similar. Hey, Paul, it's uh, Tristan. I know you're probably just browsing, but I want to make sure I don't spam you either. What city mm -hmm. are you mainly mm -hmm. looking in so that I can send you homes you like? See, mm -hmm. along the same way, exactly what Erica was saying. Um, and and, so and someone, put, someone put in the chat box, uh, were we talking about doing this now or uh, are we talking about doing it um, you know, later on? And, and let's be clear, we are talking about doing this now. Um, I, sp I spent the morning, we're on a, we're on, Erica and I are on a one, uh, one hour break uh, for lunch um, for, with an all day uh, Zoom call that we're having with Gary Keller. And one of the things that Gary Keller said uh, was that agents should be six to seven hours a day reaching out right now. Um, I've never heard that number before. Uh, I can tell you that, that I'm, spending, I'm spending six to seven hours a day for sure reaching out to my people. And so my people are uh, team leaders and office owners and also uh, and also, you know, some of our top agents. And, and mainly, again, this is, this, this is a repeat from last week. Um, and maybe it, it's worth, you know, just having this conversation every single week because this is the difference maker. And I'm working on a program to, to create group accountability, certainly for our team leaders and also for agents separately. And that is doing these I care messages. And, yeah. and, and I do it. Uh, I have a very specific way of doing it. Um, it's not one size fits all. It's what is comfortable for you. If, you. if you're not comfortable right now calling, just calling out into your sphere and saying, hey, it's Paul. It's Paul Morris just checking in on you. If that's weird for you, uh, I'm going to tell you what I do. And, and by the way, if it's not weird for you, go for it. Uh, Tristan had suggested in a side conversation that we had that you know, I record a little video message on my phone and send the video message. That works great for, uh, for some of our folks. Again, not natural to me. Here's what I'm doing. I am sending out a uh, customized, but only semi-customized first message. That, that first message would go like this. Hey, Tristan, uh, it's Paul. Uh, you know, these are crazy times. I, I wanted to check in and, you know, stay safe is the first most important. Want to check in, see how you're doing. How's your family? Uh, I might, I might um, customize it a tiny bit. Um, and then, you know, ha end with, uh, end with a, a, a hopeful message. This too shall pass. You know, thinking about you, this too shall pass. Uh, Paul Morris. And I hit send. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed, and I, I have yet to have anybody disagree with me on this. And, you know, I was thinking maybe it's just me, but when I look at my inbox on my text messaging, my inbox, which is like, Hey, Paul, how are you? I hope you're okay. That is coming from only from my family and my closest business associates. Now I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's natural because at times like this, people are freaked out. They're worried about their family and their very closest people, but I get to be a standout. And when I was talking about this uh, yesterday to my team, I got a response that I read to them. I don't have it up right now because it was just a live response coming in to one of my messages. It's like, oh my gosh, I was just thinking about you. It's so funny you texted. You can't believe how many times I get that exact message. So people are thinking about one another, but they're not reaching out. This is a time for you to shine. That's my first message, okay? Hey, it's, uh, hey Tristan, it's Paul, da, 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 just checking in you know, this too shall pass. And then I hit send. And then what I do is I have, a, I have another message ready to go, which is a cut and paste. So if Tristan doesn't respond, I leave him alone. Okay. If Tristan sends back and says, Hey, wow, Paul, you know, thanks for reaching out. I've been thinking about you too. Da, 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 da. Then I have a curated message, which I change every day. I, I wake up, I read the news. I find out what's the most important thing I can send out to, uh, to friends and family and realtors uh, and people in my sphere. And then I just say, uh, you know, they say, hey, Paul, thinking about you too. Da, 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 da. And then I just send the next one and say, hey, I, I think maybe you'll find this helpful. Now, I wouldn't do that in the first message because it feels too spammy. Okay. So if I go, 
hey, Tristan, been thinking about you, hope you're well, here's a few resources for you. I just find that less interactive. So I send the first one, if I get a response, which 90, I can't tell you, very high 90s, uh, I just then send it back. Very true. Very true. Yep. We've got Erica back. Erica. All right. Well, I don't know if we do. We're having, can you hear me? Okay. We're having yeah. technical difficulties. Way better. That is so okay. good. Well, I uh, disappeared and came back. So let's just do the best we can. Yeah. Okay. I'm loving it. So thank you, Erica. I appreciate that. Now, Gary's saying to be on the phone or be reaching out to your, to your uh, sphere past clients database, anywhere between the six to seven hours. And you also have to take into consideration that some of these conversations now are much longer. And this mm -hmm. is why too. So, well, they're different and they're easier. Actually, I think for a lot of people I'm talking with, they're easier than feeling like you're calling with your hat in your hand. You're really just not calling to sell or ask for business so much as you are calling to be um, a decent human being and caring. Right. So it's an easier call. I will, I will say this. He's right. Of course, Gary did say that this morning and yesterday morning, Josh team also mentioned that what they're seeing in markets that are advancing through the cycle, if you have 10 people in your pipeline as an agent, for example, expect of those 10 that seven will disappear. So if you have 10 items in your pipeline that you think are soon business, uh, buyers or sellers, just consider that you may have three out of those 10 in the coming months. So it's not intended to scare people, but we need our guys to be on, on top of this and building their pipelines and understanding that it, it's a different day. You're probably gonna have to make a lot more calls. For some people that might be going from zero to five a day. For some people that might be going from two hours to six hours, but do what you can. So I would say you know yourself, right? Hopefully you have some self-awareness around this and create structure that works for you. Maybe mm -hmm. it's something as simple as, you know, reaching out to 20 people a day, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. regardless of the time that that takes. Mm -hmm. right. And Whatever that's, works for you. that's what I'm doing is creating a, uh, an accountability structure around it because uh, just speaking for myself, I know it's true of a lot of people. When I have a, when I have a goal and a certain number of, of uh, eye care messages that I'm gonna send every single day, I'm far more productive. And if, I, if, my, if my, num my number is 20, because I guess maybe Eric and I have talked about that, but um, you know, I make sure I hit 20 a day. And you know, I, can, I can feel free to send 40 or 60 or 80. Um, each, each message takes me, uh, you know, it takes me a little less than a minute to do. I can send out 20 messages in about 20 minutes. I usually mess around. It takes me about a half hour to do. Uh, because it's also very interactive. I'm getting a lot of return right away. Uh, people, people coming right back to me. So uh, my advice to the agents, it's certainly what I'm doing with team leaders and OPs is giving them a number to do per day. Uh, I don't think 20 is, is, a, is a huge ask. Uh, a lot of people are asking me, you know, in the chat box, what are messages that we can, you know, because I said I do this fault, you know, I do this sort of how are you uh, thinking about you? You know, this too shall pass. Let me know if there's anything I can do. Sort of generic front message. And then when they respond, because I get more than a 90% response rate from that. Um, you know, I have a cut and paste that I curate every day, a, a different one. And people are asking, what is a good message to send out? Um, one thing is, uh, I'll tell you, okay, one thing is stay away from the sensational stuff, okay, for sure. Um, but if you can be what, you know, if I'm a realtor on this call, I want to know what am I, what do I want to be known for? Um, so a lot of it is local information. So if you're, you know, I saw some stuff in the chat box from a Santa Barbara agent, um, any local information, you know, we're on a shelter at home order, but you can drive around in your car, okay? It's safe for you, it's safe for the public. You know, uh, you can drive around in your car and go, hey, there's a, you know, long, just letting you know, there's a, there, I have two Whole Foods that are near me. I just did this yesterday. I was out and about and I happened to drive by both Whole Foods. One had a line all the way down the street, the other had no line. That's a perfect thing to send out to your Santa Monica uh, sphere. Just letting them know that you're active and you're out there and here are some, here are some tips. If you listen to news and you know you just any positive thing that you can send, so that's 
that's, that's, that's what I would say. I would start with something local and then, you know, something insightful about the real, about the mortgage industry or just something related to your business. I've been watching the chats going by and people are wanting us to talk about the market. Yeah. Okay. They're seeing deals fall. They're seeing deals fall for job loss, yep. et cetera, which is what I was mentioning before. You know, for mm -hmm. those of you who haven't really felt a change yet, it's coming. So yes, they're still in multiple market, uh, multiple offer market. We're mm -hmm. going to see that decline. Not today, maybe, but it's happening. So it's going to happen to everybody. So it may not be all in the same hour or the same day. My, one of my concerns because of this, for especially for our California people, is that typically when I talk to agents in California, they, they, they speak in terms of volume. And the reason they can speak in terms of volume is because the price range, you know, the average price range in given any area really, it's pretty typically high compared to a lot of the other parts of the country, right? So they don't tend to speak in terms of units, which is for me a little bit, um, it's concerning because if an average agent in California is typically accustomed to doing whatever, you know, four to six deals a year and they're, and they're making a decent living, right? In a lot of cases, they can make a decent living. That doesn't help them develop the habits and the skill sets that they need to do business in a declining market. So the habits that we create for agents, so, you know, in, in Boise, our agents, are doing an average of 12 deals a year in a market center with 650 agents. So, you know, I mean, some of our agents are doing hundreds and hundreds of deals and some are just starting out, but 12 on average for a large market center is very telling for people who really understand numbers. And it's because we think in terms of units. So I, <laughs> we were all going to go through this together and I'm just going to keep beating this drum. You need to think in terms of units. You need to be making your calls. You need to know what your database is made up of. You need to be consistent. The market's going to change. We're going to have to come up with, we'll be dealing with, um, you know, upcoming, we're going to have a seller's market. We're not going to be in a buyer's market anymore, right? Nope. I agree. Time. And to add to that, um, Eric. Sorry, turn that all around. We're going to be in a buyer's market. I, I agree exactly with what Eric is saying here. We're going to see a lot more buyers. And so we need to start shifting mm -hmm. as to the information that we're giving to people. So a couple mm -hmm. of things that we're doing as a team out here is let me show you. I showed you this, Paul, earlier. This mm -hmm. is something that, that we're doing uh, on a daily basis. We're keeping track of local markets. So this, you see Thousand Oaks, Westlake, Newbury Park. We're also doing it for different parts of West LA and Malibu. This way we can post it to our Instagram, we can post it to mm -hmm. Facebook, but it gives us the ability to look like that expert because mm -hmm. what happens is eventually what's gonna happen is the buyers are going to be the ones that are gonna determine uh, where the market is heading, like Erica was saying. So, uh, but it's different for every market as to when it changes and you won't be able to know when unless you have your ear to the ground and saying every day checking what's active, what went pending, what sold, and you're tracking that. Well, right now we've had a lot of uh, sellers that have been waiting for the top of the market, right? They've been waiting yeah. to sell because they're not sure. And you can never really guess, but we can guess now. Yeah, we, we missed it, right? So if you're a seller and you were waiting for the top of the market, that happened already. We're pretty clear on that. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to see a lot of people that are jumping into the market mm -hmm. fairly quickly to get their home sold before the bottom hits. Mm -hmm. right, so we're going to mm -hmm. see inventory loosen up for a number of reasons, through job loss, for people who are wanting to get the most out of their home before it continues to decline. And we're going to need education. And people are going to need to plug in with their coaches and to education to learn new skills and new scripts because yesterday's scripts aren't going to work anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. And I think that's part, of the, that's part of the change. That's why you guys have to keep on coming back uh, to see what we've got. Now, let's talk about how the market will change specifically for, for LA, Paul, uh, mm -hmm. and Erica, either of you can answer this. Could, could you explain to people what would happen next? Because I know it's too early to tell. We don't know how long this is going to last, number one, right? Mm -hmm. And if this lasts longer, like into end of May, June, mm -hmm. we'll have more, I think, more of an issue than if this would end sooner, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what are some things that we can look to, to at least shift with that, Paul, ahead of the market shift? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think, I, I think none of us, none of us have a crystal ball. 
Okay. Uh, and it's, it's interesting to watch the, to watch the, uh, the questions and things go by in the chat box, because I know, first of all, you're at the head of the curve if you're even on this call. Okay. Um, and, and when you have, such mixed messaging from our leadership and, 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 uh, you know, from our, from our, from, from the, you know, from the president on down, I'm not, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with anybody. It is just the fact where, where the president is saying one day, you know, not a problem next day, it's a major problem. Uh, the head of the head of his own team, uh, Dr. Fauci is saying, you know, this is a serious, serious problem. Um, you know, it's very hard to, uh, it's very hard to predict. Um, I, I'll say this to you as a, uh, just as a one-off seller, okay? I, I sold a big piece of investment property right before this happened. I'm glad I did. That, 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 but I didn't do some other things that I would have liked to have done. So my timing's not perfect, um, but I was getting ready to sell a house that I have in Palm Springs, which I didn't, which I, which I didn't get on the market in time. Um, I'm still going to put that house on the market. Um, I'm probably going to bring it out <clears throat> at a slightly lower price to attract some attention. And for me to think that, <clears throat> that I'm going to get the same price that I was going to get two weeks ago or three weeks ago or four weeks ago, I think is, is, uh, is, would be putting my head in the sand. So I'm still going to go ahead and put that house on the market. I am going to lower the price a bit. Um, yes, I saw, you know, I saw the chat box there, there, the capital markets are still, you know, you can still get, uh, you can still get a loan. Uh, rates are still historically low and, and people are scared and are going to be on the sidelines. That's, that's, that's the way I'm seeing things. And, and we are seeing, we are seeing things drop out of escrow. Yeah, we definitely are. And I think the key word is, is uh, that Erica and Paul and everybody here understands is uncertainty, but we, we've all, we've, we've never been through this as a world, right? So mm -hmm. the fact is we don't know how much of this will affect the market. We know it'll affect it. We just don't know how much. So that's why we're here telling you, the things that you need to be doing, which is well, reaching out to your database. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a whole host of things in life that we can't yeah. control always, right? Sometimes yeah. more dramatic, noticeably, mm -hmm. sometimes less, but still, there's going to always be two categories. There are things you can't control and things you can control. So why don't we just, as a mm -hmm. group or as a team, agree to focus on what we can control? Exactly. What are those things that we need to be doing? Let's make a real quick, short list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and look, uh, we, we actually have that list. We've been working on it over the last three weeks. And last week we had Sean Rawls on. And from his conversation with us, we were working on top lead sources right now. And so let me, let me grab that and put it on the chat box so you guys can, can use that as well. It gives you all the- a lot of people running campaigns right now because we're seeing a lot of successful campaigns and lead generation. Yep. Correct. Exactly. So um, let me put that in the attendance. And I'm also seeing a lot of, you, you know, here, here's the thing. Um, not everybody on this call, maybe most people were not here during the 2008 shift. Eric and I certainly were. Um, and I will tell you that we came out as a company um, and as individuals stronger uh, after that shift than we went into it. Uh, I certainly didn't enjoy it, so it's not something I wished, you know, oh, boy, let's have another one of those so we can even come out stronger. Uh, I wouldn't wish for it, uh, but we did come out stronger. And the reason why was as all of our competitors went, went you know, sort of downhill, we at least managed to stay even. What that did was give us a lot greater market share, so when we came out of it, we were way ahead. As a realtor, you have the same opportunity. So you have um, certain things are going to affect everyone. So a change in, you know, certainly a disruption this huge, but even a change in interest rates or whatever, it affects everyone. And, and what we can do that affects our individual business, it's a little microcosm of the market. You can do more to affect your business uh, personally than any outside force. So if you wake up in the morning and you do six hours of outreach versus zero, 
that's going to have more impact on your own business than, uh, than anything outside. And every single time we see people, um, when there's a downturn, it hurts most people, but we always see a small group that thrives during this time. And that, and, and, and that is going to be the case for people. Again, looking at, was looking at the chat box for people who are, who are very, um, uh, well-established realtors, uh, like we have on this call, you mm -hmm. know, who do really well in their market. Now's the time to absolutely crush it and, you know, take back your places. If you're not number one or, you know, just distance yourself from the competition. Uh, I'm also seeing in the chat box, there are a lot of agents like, Hey, you know what? We're new. Um, <clears throat> anytime that you hear anybody that says, Oh, I started my business in the toughest time. They always make the best realtors. Okay. Yeah. If you can survive right now, uh, you'll make it in any market. How do you do that? The answer is get active. Don't, you know, and <clears throat> there's lots of instructions and things that people can do and, and just making sure that you're getting, while everyone else is worried and hunkered down, you are active. Um, we, you know what? We are pretty well known industry wide, worldwide for having the best education available. Mm -hmm. So if you're new, just get into the systems, get into the education, get into the follow the models, and just do what people tell you to do. I, I love seeing the newer agents come on board and embrace everything that we offer because they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. right? They just they go, what do I do? And we show them what to do, show them the roadmap, they do it, and guess what? It turns into business, and it's a beautiful thing. Um, I agree with you, Paul. The market share people gain now, they'll never lose. Mm -hmm. The market share they lose, they're never going to get back. Mm -hmm. We can do this. Absolutely. We've done it before. We're going to do it again. We just not need to all be on board with uh, our foundational roles, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Just a few things we need to do well, and we need to be consistent, and we get to the other side, and we gain market share. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. There's a couple of questions as to scripts you use for certain situations. One is for sellers that are on the fence, explaining to them about multiple offers. Uh, I, I would definitely... <clears throat> do my best to every day be checking the MLS, know how many actives there are, know how, much, how many went into pending, how many have sold. This way you can use mm -hmm. that data to be able to give those people that are on the fence that data so you look like the professional, right? Mm -hmm. And one thing Erica said at the very beginning, which was when you're calling your database in Sphere or anybody, online leads, don't push the sale. Come from a point of giving value, and mm -hmm. being concerned. Mm -hmm. And if they're, if they have a question about real estate, trust me, they will bring it up. It's been happening. Mm -hmm. So uh, Erica's right on the point on that one. Uh, now, mm -hmm. for, if, if I were, guys, go ahead. No, I was going to say, do you guys have anything else to add? Well, if I were, if I were consulting with somebody who's a seller, who was thinking about getting, who was thinking about selling, um, I, I would just take, the approach that I would take is just exactly what I'm feeling right now as a seller, a uh, potential seller. And that is, look, uh, if I had the choice to sell, to sell tomorrow versus four weeks ago, um, I would choose four weeks ago, but that <laughs> option is not available. Okay. So if my, if my choice is to sell today or four weeks from now, um, that's a no brainer. Okay. Uh, conversely, if you want to just hold the property for another couple, two, three years, that's fine. Um, again, scripts for seller is that right now, uh, liquidity is going to matter, you know, more than, uh, more than just about anything. And if you can still get a good price, you might not get what you were going to get four weeks ago, but if you can still get a good price and come out, you know, we've had a very long run. Um, nobody, barely anybody unless it's an accident uh buys or sells at the very top or bottom i've done both uh uh I, i've made the big mistake and i've had the big win you know i sold something a big piece four four six weeks ago you know it's magical timing i also have something i meant to bring to market and i just didn't get around to it it's terrible timing so you know, the, you're never going to get the top or the bottom. We have had a huge, huge run up. And if you can, if you're in a position where you want to sell and take some chips off the table and get some profit, you know, take some profit. I still think right now is a good time. I personally, when I come out on the market, 
uh, with my with my house, I'm going to come out at a lower price because I don't want to. Uh, I, I want to come out and get some attention on it and maybe create a little multiple offer deal. And if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm going to be very proactive about it and uh, and and come out at a lower price. That that's that's the way I view a uh, working with a seller. Right. That and I would also add the fact that. The best time to sell is now if you can't four weeks ago, right? We get that. That's perfect. And that what we don't want to do is chase the market down. Correct. So you want to come out and you want to be very aggressive with your pricing, Mr. Seller. You can leave very little negotiating room. What we want to, our intention is to get someone interested enough to make an offer. Then we can negotiate. So I always advise the seller clients to price the homes closer to the bone, leave less negotiating room, attract potentially multiple offers. That would be great. But uh, what we don't want to do is chase the market down. We have all of those graphs. We have all of those scripts. We need to dust off in our market centers, probably mm -hmm. uh, seller mastery and do some uh, educating on scripts for sellers right away because yes, we're going to be shifting out of this mm -hmm. current market into. And, and someone, you know, there, by the way, we've got, you know, we have a ton of people on this call. It's very cool. Um, you know, I, I, I just checked cause I was getting, trying to get back to the, back to the, the, uh, the dialogue box. We have 512 people on the call today. That's phenomenal. Um, and, and, and some of the people on there are on the call that are putting messages in the chat box or experts, uh, could be leading this call. So I appreciate everybody sharing. Uh, that's phenomenal. And someone asked me, um, you know, thanks for the seller script. You know, what would you be talking to buyers about? Um, and, you know, and certainly, you know, I would love Tristan and Erica to, to chime in on top of this, but, you know, we are still in terms of buying, we are still at, uh, an historic low in terms of interest rates, um, that's bringing affordability, uh, down to us. I think that right now you can get, um, you can get, uh, into a place that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to. Um, and it's really about the needs of that particular buyer. But I would definitely talk about the fact that you're still in a historic, historic time. This, mm -hmm. unlike 2008, okay, and I repeat this again and again and again, unlike 2008, 2008, we had a great recession, uh, one of the worst downturns since the depression. And the real estate was at, sadly, was at the tip of that spear going down. We were at the epicenter of what went wrong. Um, and I believe that real estate took a disproportionate hit. And so um, was everybody hurt? Absolutely everybody was hurt. But people in real estate were hurt worse. This time, um, it was totally unrelated to real estate. And the stock market took a plunge way before real estate. Uh, real estate's still pretty steady right now. Um, yeah. So I believe that real estate is going to be a safe haven. Okay. Mm -hmm. And here's my, here's my buyer script because guess what? Paul, I'm going to show I'm, a graph while you're talking that yeah, goes go along go with you. Okay? Go for it. Here's my buyer script because I'm also a buyer. Uh, I am currently in escrow right now on a five plex in West Hollywood. And did it cross my mind? Like, Hey, should I blow out of escrow? Like, geez, I entered escrow, the world was a different place. I can get out of it. Am I going to get out of it? And here's my script for you guys because it's exactly the way I'm feeling. If you take 100 investments and that 100 investments are 99 stocks and my fiveplex in West Hollywood, I will say this to you. Ask the world's greatest expert on stocks and you go through any one of the 99 and say, where is this stock going to be five years from now? And I believe, I'm sorry, I believe in my heart, even the experts do not know. If they did know, they would go and rush and put all of their money into that. It's like, oh, we know red is, you know, is it red or black? We know red's going to hit. Great. Everybody throw their money on red. You don't know. I don't believe that anybody knows where those 99 stocks are going to be five years from today. And I believe that we, I believe that I know where my five plex in West Hollywood is going to be five, five years from now. And my answer is just fine. Yeah. I mean, dude, look at, for, for those of you wondering what the heck to say to your buyers, show them a graph that shows interest rates from 1970s to now. It's, yeah. Uh, really all you need to be doing is talking to them about the affordability index. 
Yes. To get your correct. head wrapped around that language. Yeah, exactly. Become a, become a professional to understand what has happened in our past and, and the opportunities that we have still right now as buyers. So I think you start using graphs like this and you start using facts. People start seeing you as a professional as well. I'll upload them into, into this as well. So you guys have those as well, but people are asking about scripts and what to say. I think the scripts will change as we get out of, out of this uh, COVID-19 situation. But for now, what you want to do is exactly what Erica started off with saying, just, be as authentic and genuine as possible, no matter who you're reaching out to. If they're interested in real estate, and a lot of them are wondering what the heck is happening, they will bring it up themselves. Just be sure that you're making those calls on a daily basis. And it's important for you to, to also come to, to events like this, like uh, Erica, Paul, they're all amazing with the amount of knowledge they have. And the fact that we're putting on this for you and we're going to be continuing to do this uh, to do this throughout the week and throughout next week is important. Jump on as many as you can, but also don't waste your time jumping on too much education, right? Balance it out. Make those calls that you need to make as well. You guys want to add anything, Erica, Paul? No, I think, uh, I think I really appreciate everybody, uh, everybody getting on. We're doing, we're going to do this call. Uh, every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Um, and we're also doing a call every Thursday at 10 a.m., which highlights the, the uh, this, is for, this is for our Keller Williams people, that highlights the technology that we have right now and how you can use that technology. One of the, you know, one of the uh, great examples is that uh, we, have a lead, we have a lead generating program inside of command that's costing about a dollar or just a little over a dollar per lead, which is unheard of. Uh, we're using Keller Williams mass buying power to, uh, to do it. And, and, and those people who know how to do it are, taking, are able to take advantage of it. And if you don't know how to do it, um, we might as well not even have the technology. So that's why we're doing it every Thursday at 10 a.m., Tristan's going to host it. We're going to have Blake, our regional technology trainer. Uh, the two of them, I'm certainly going to be on the call, but I'm going to be more of a uh, learning along with everybody else. So, um, so think about uh, tuning in to us 10 a.m. every Thursday to get uh, technology tips that are really going to help. It's going to be all, all uh, geared to these times. And then, uh, and Tuesday, we'll continue to get best practices. I'm going to look through this chat box. Tristan and I will, and we'll see the things that, that people are most interested in right now. And we'll make sure that next Tuesday, we're, we're shifting and adjusting to answer all of your questions and help where we can. One more thing I just want to throw in there. We've got a lot of people asking for scripts, and that's going to continue. Maybe we could put together a special mm -hmm. episode going forward where people just bring their best scripts because like you said, there are a lot of agents on this call that are really oh, yeah. good at what they're doing and I'm sure they'd be willing to help. Yeah, yep. and before everybody leaves, just check your emails. I know Paul is sending out an invite to the Thursday webinars where we're gonna go over command and the Tuesday webinars where Paul and I are gonna interview somebody that can help you, always help you through this market. And for those of you that are watching the chat box there, I put a couple of links in there. One to the graphics that you were asking for. I'll drop them in again. They're from Keeping Current Matters and they have different uh, sources there. And then if you're able to, tomorrow I'm interviewing a CPA, world famous CPA about the stimulus package and how agents can take advantage of it. And also how our clients can take advantage of it as well. I put the link up there. I'll put it up again. And then Friday, I'm talking to the president of NAR. He's going to go over what they're doing uh, at Capitol Hill to help us just so that we better mm -hmm. understand what they do for us, guys. So mm -hmm. um, Josh team will be on with us next week, but I'll also have the CEO of Century 21 and mm -hmm. the CEO of Compass just to give you the different angles from everybody, what everybody is doing. Because mm -hmm. the purpose of us Doing this, it's just to give back to you guys so we shift quicker. The more mm -hmm. we know, the more educated we are, the better actions we can take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And any win in the real estate industry is win for all of us. Yes. 
great point. We're all in this together. Yeah. Thank and you. the Thank active, you the the active are going to rise to the top right now. If you're on this call, you're already uh, you're already uh, at the top of the top of the. You're ready to be at the absolute top of it. Just making sure that you get active. Agreed. Erica, thank you for your time. I know you're busy probably like 12 My pleasure. hours a day. So. Well, Paul and I are going to hop back on a regional call as soon as we say yes. goodbye here. Okay. Thanks, thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Tristan. Thanks, Erica. Thanks to everyone.